Kent Leonhart. Kent, good morning. How are you, sir? Good morning. How are you, Rob? I'm well, thank you. Uh, we just finished uh, in regards to a conversation with Stephen Skinner that we were unable to continue from the first half. So I appreciate your patience uh, waiting no for problem. us to finish that. Uh, thank you kindly, sir. Kent, uh, you are running for re-election as the Commissioner of Agriculture. Why did you decide to run once again? Well, we've had so many great successes, uh, and we want to continue that successes. And I've pretty much made this announcement that this will be my last term. Uh, three terms is enough in any one of the uh, higher offices in state government. But, we've, you know, when you look at the, uh, the numbers since I've been Commissioner of Agriculture, you know, we've gone from uh, in the low $700 million of product value in the state of West Virginia to over $947 million. I sure would like to be the commissioner when we break that $1 billion mark for the first time, and we're definitely on our way there. You know, farm income's up 26%. Uh, net income is up 50%. And expenses are up. You know, we've seen what the price of gas and diesel has done to, uh, uh, to our industry and to everybody um, out there. So, you know, we're, we're doing great things, and we want to, my team is so excited to continue to bring those things to the citizens of West Virginia. Kent, why did you first decide to run for the Secretary of Agriculture when you were uh, looking for your first term? Well, I, I actually ran in 2012 uh, when I was asked to uh, be on the ballot after somebody dropped off. So I was appointed to the ballot in 2012. Uh, I came very close to winning that race, and that was uh, I only lost by three points, and I was a total unknown. Nobody in the legislature. And I lost to a 20-year senator who was very familiar to folks up uh, in your area as well. He had, I guess he had covered some of Berkeley and Hampshire County at the time uh, or sometime in the past as, you know, as the mm -hmm. redistricting has gone. Uh, didn't get across the finish line there. Uh, the uh, party then said, you did so well, let's run for the state senate. And I was the, actually the last race called in 2014 that tied the Senate, 17-17, uh, uh, Republicans and 17 Democrats. And the next uh, morning, a Democrat switched party to, to give us the majority. So I was proud to be part of that change uh, in the state legislature after 83 years. Uh, fast forward, I was enjoying that. Two years later, uh, the party said, you know, we think you need to run for commissioner of agriculture again and after thinking about it and my wife and i discussing we said okay we did it and then we won by about eight points at that uh that time and then of course in 2020 i was reelected uh by a, pretty much of a landslide people see the good work we're doing in our comment community there was a a question for you that echoed one of the questions i was going to ask you as well from uh, william whittington and what are your thoughts on the loss of farmland in Berkeley County, as so much of it is now being turned into much-needed housing in our area? Right. Well, you know, that's a, that's a local zoning issue. And I, I, I don't like the loss of farmland at all, um, obviously. And we're going to need that. As the world population doubles, uh, we're going to need uh, the farmland to, to feed the world. And, you know, the United States has fed the world. But the good news is that we've been able to improve efficiency uh, with technology and training and a lot of the classes that we do, uh, we are improving the farm output. Like I mentioned early on, our figures are up. We're getting more production. We're doing very well. Uh, farmland uh, preservation has been ongoing. Berkeley County is one of the largest farmland preservation counties. I'm grateful for that and the work that the folks do out there. we got to keep moving forward, and we can't let anybody uh, delve into that because we have to have this open space. And then, again, you know, we work very hard. You, you and I talked about this on the radio uh, when our apple uh, producers were suddenly faced with no market. The Department of Agriculture stepped in. We helped them. Uh, we found the markets. They got a fair price for their apples, and we saved the... Uh, and we saved the uh, and we saved the industry. And some of those trees would have been bulldozed or made into housing if we hadn't done what we did. So we're fighting every day to preserve farmland. And I've been working very hard to get the farm, like the solar panels and things of that nature, 
put onto abandoned mine land properties uh, throughout the state because those lands aren't as good for uh, farming, obviously, and, but they're great locations, and a lot of times they have power entry uh, places uh, right there. So that would be the best place to put uh, the solar panels uh, for that those that are being subsidized to uh, to do uh, solar energy. Kent, by so the way, by we're the, working on it. Katie Orr just uh, chimed in. She says, "Thank you. It was amazing what the Department of Agriculture did to help us over there at Orr's Farm Market." So you got some props there. Well, thank you so much, Katie. Appreciate it. Matt Miller. Some of the issue I know in in Berkeley County, and I'm sure it's it's happening in other places around the state, is that a, a farm that was operated by a family that next generation isn't really into farming, may not even still be living in the state of West Virginia, and so they sell that off to a developer, and then we begin to see those houses going up. Are you seeing more and more young people kind of turning back to or getting more interested and involved in agriculture that might keep things going in the right direction as opposed to having developments and things like that going up? Well, that's a great question, and I'm very proud to say that since I've been the Commissioner of Agriculture, except during the COVID years when a lot of the school stuff dropped off, we have increased the participation of our youth in agricultural programs. Currently, I was just at a, a VOAG teacher uh, convention uh, last week, and we now have over 7,300 students in FFA in the state of West Virginia. That is just phenomenal. Before that, we were in the 6,000s, and we've been gaining steadily ever since. The other great thing that we're, we're seeing is that the National Ag Statistics that came out uh, just a couple months ago showed that West Virginia is up in the number of farmers under age 30, and West Virginia is up in the number of farmers with less than five years' experience. So those we're all moving in the right direction, and our Veterans and Heroes to Agriculture program is helping with those statistics, getting veterans into agriculture and healing the unseen wounds of war. So there's a lot of things uh, happening in West Virginia, and the interest in agriculture is growing, particularly when you see tripling of farmers' markets. That shows the interest in local foods. Speaking of veterans, by the way, for those who don't know, Kent Leonhard is a U.S. Marine Corps member. Uh, mm -hmm. John Bodwell. Yeah. Kent, um, we have a lot of areas in our state that are very economically depressed at this point and have been for a while. Are there any programs, any ag programs that you guys do to sort of help build up agriculture in these depressed areas to hopefully, you know, add to their economies? Oh, uh, yes. Well, one of the things that we just mentioned, the, uh, the abandoned mine land program south of Charleston, we helped an a new abattoir gets started uh, using abandoned mine land funds uh, that will slaughter West Virginia beef, which has helped us bring our uh, red meat production in the state of West Virginia up 51% since I've been commissioner. We've also have, now have the largest uh, lavender farm in the state of West Virginia, east of the Mississippi, and a lot of that's on abandoned mine land. That's down in Boone County in the southern. Uh, we're talking to other folks on trying to reestablish a farmer's market, not just a farmer's market, but a livestock market in southwest uh, West Virginia. Kentucky had a market that those farmers used, and that market closed in eastern Kentucky, and it became too long. it's become too long of a drive for the farmers to get their livestock up to uh, Jackson uh, County. So we've already started a working group, and we're working on trying to get another livestock market, even if just a temporary one to see how it goes down in southwest uh, West Virginia. So we're working on those type of initiatives. And, of course, we're looking at aquaculture, and we're looking at a lot of the high tunnel programs out there. You know, you've got down in Raleigh County, uh, some of the schools are very active, and they're growing their FFA programs. So it all takes time to turn a, a battleship around, but uh, we've done that. And uh, we're looking forward to continuing that work. Well, and when and and when Kent says for our listeners, when Kent says FFA, he means the Future Farmers of America. For those of you who don't know, very important organization that there are a lot of helps helps a lot of kids, just in general, not just to go into farming, but just in general to know more about you know where our food comes from, how it how it works. 
Can you talk about some of the things that, that FFA does, if there are any new things that FFA is doing to attract all these new members? You said it's really growing in the state. Well, yes. I mean, you know, for so often uh, these programs have been focused solely on livestock, but they're getting in more into the uh, agricultural technology world. Uh, but they still, you know, West Virginians are doing great in the national level at soil uh, judging contests and things of that nature. We're seeing a lot of teams to nationals. Uh, so our program is great. Uh, but there's, they're getting into the technology of agriculture. They're learning how to do And I mentioned earlier about the efficiencies because, you know, farmland is under, uh, under a lot of pressure, not just in West Virginia. Kentucky lost 5,000 farms in the last survey. And that's a big, big agricultural state as well. There's not a state that hasn't lost a little bit of farmland. But, you know, we've been able to change the nature of things. 2022, in fact, we added 200 new farms. But that's uh, the technology and our students and our SLOAG teachers are modernizing agriculture in West Virginia. And that is so very important. And like you mentioned earlier, that the FFA students, if they, even if they don't go into agriculture when they graduate from school, at least they're an educated consumer. And that is so important uh, for getting the folks to understand what agriculture really is and what it does and how important it is. We often take for granted that we eat from a safe and abundant food supply. Kent Leonhardt is our guest, Commissioner of Agriculture in West Virginia. Kent, there was an attempt made in the legislature this year to put a review period of time in for land and the farmland preservation uh, for the conservation of farmland. Uh, did you approve of that attempt, or did, would you prefer that that land not have uh, an automatic review over so many years? Uh, I was not in favor of that. We have to, when somebody puts farmland into farmland protection, they did that with the intent of it staying there in perpetuity. I remember I did one for a cousin, uh, and she told me when she said, Kent, when I pass, I don't want to look down from my pink cloud and see this farm uh, developed. So these people are sincere about it. It's not just an economic benefit to them. It allows them to stay in agriculture. But the citizens enjoy that open space, and we need that open space so we don't have the total clutter of of urbanization in our beautiful counties and everything. And then the people, that's their legacy. When they pass on, they want to make sure that that family farm stays in open space and agriculture. Does that program need more funding? It could use a lot more funding, particularly out in your area. <laughs> do, um, do you have a dollar amount that do you think a, a range of which would help? No, I haven't gotten into that, uh, delved into that. You know, we've uh, more more would always be good in the farmland preservation world. Is the, is that a place that you could approach the legislature with some of the surplus funding that that could go to that as opposed to maybe other other projects or other ideas? Uh, that's a good question. I, we could certainly appo uh, approach that. You know, the federal government does a match uh, with this as well, so we do take a, advantage of the uh, of the federal matching. What's the dairy farm situation in West Virginia, Kent? Well, the dairy farms, you know, the problem with dairy farming is we've the dairy farmers gotten so efficient in the state, uh, not just in the state of West Virginia, but nationally. And it's hard to compete with a three or 4,000 cow dairy uh, in the production of milk. You know, the we can almost, just using the genetics, we can almost double dairy production in this country without changing the number of cows. So one of the things that we need to do is to get uh, dairy back in whole milk back into the schools. It's more nutritious than the skim milk. It would help the dairy farmers uh, tremendously, not just in West Virginia, but nationally. And we are, we just brought in one of the most, well, the most modern uh, shelf-stable beverage processing facilities in the world uh, in the Morgantown area. And that 
with some other initiatives that work we're working on we're hoping to revitalize the dairy in the uh in the near future in the area now the dairy farms are going to look a little different than they did in the past but that that's to be expected again we have a lot of great students uh that are coming up in the world and hopefully they'll take that technology and start to improve the dairy situation uh but we've lost a number of farms but again some of our farms have increased production too so you can't always do a a calculation on number of farms it's what is our output and our production Kent, uh, are, are you aware of the program at, at Hedgesville High School? It was just a little over a month ago that there was the announcement uh, they'll be doing a new outdoor garden on about uh, one and a half acres. Um, I'm, I'm looking at an article now saying that uh, it could produce up to fifteen to 20,000 pounds of potatoes this year, and that will be divided uh, between the, the local rescue mission here in Martinsburg along with the Meals on Wheels program. Uh, are, are you aware? Tell us more about that, and are these types of programs – also growing and developing across the state. Well, I'm not aware of that particular program, but my hat's off to the folks that are putting it together and getting it started. But we are seeing these types of programs throughout the state. You know, we've had the message from day one of West Virginia Grown. It's a program that was that they had the name out there. We revitalized it. It was sitting dormant. We got a new logo, and we were promoting the West Virginia Grown. You go down to Wayne County, and you'll see a, a group called Chicken Tenders in the middle school, and they call them Chicken Tenders because they tend chickens, and they're selling the <laughs> eggs to the kitchen. This is making me hungry, uh, Ken. <laughs> I know. I mean, but we're seeing this type of program all over the state. I'm gonna have next time I'm out that way. I'm gonna have to go take a look at the program out in Hedgesville. Uh, I look forward to seeing it. I want to ask you about, and you touched on this a little bit earlier, but in Jefferson County, we're seeing a lot more of the land turned into solar farms. Uh, yes. That's creating an issue in the county. It's uh, one of the div more divisive issues in Jefferson County. Is that a trend we're seeing across the state of West Virginia? Are many of the uh, farmers' lands being turned into solar farms? We're not seeing it as much in other parts of the state as we are out in uh, the eastern panhandle. You know, they target the flat land uh, because it's easier to build. And then when you have the government subsidizing it, uh, you know, the federal government subsidizing uh, these uh, programs, of course the developer is going to go after the place where it's easiest and least expensive to build. I've been promoting that we try to raise some of the panels up and at least in some areas – like down in uh, Putnam County, we're seeing some of the panels, but they're grazing sheep underneath. Uh, so we're actually having some agricultural production at the same time. But I know that's not really happening out in, uh, in Jefferson County. But, again, we're going to continue to pump, promote and push for solar panels going up on building tops that are already in existence or onto these brown fields or abandoned mine lands where some of the agricultural agricultural production is not going to be as uh, profitable. Yeah, you, you hate to see this country turn into what happened with labor, with uh, manufacturing, now with technology, with uh, chip manufacturing, and that so much of it has to be imported. It puts the country in a crisis when you get into foreign relations problems, and the same can happen with food. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's why I've been stressing from day one that we use the, uh, we do everything we can to make it sustainable right here within West Virginia, promoting the West Virginia Grown Program. And let me go back on the solar panel issue just a little bit. Sure. I, I get concerned because cause your previous guest was talking about PFAS. Yes. And there's some rare earth minerals that go into these solar panels. And I'm afraid after the useful life of the solar panels, we may see some uh, how do we remove them 30 years uh, from now? Are we going to be able to return that farmland into agricultural production? Is there going to be contamination? Is a windstorm going to damage these panels and put something into that soil that isn't healthy? So I have some concerns about that, and we need to really be thinking about that as we do these things. 
Final question for Kent Leonhardt. Yeah, Ken, you mentioned earlier the, the term flatland uh, and, and a lot of that, you know, or some of that, I may not say a lot, but being used for solar farms because of the, the easiness of, of doing that as opposed to putting it on a hillside. The same is true in farming itself. Are there some challenges, especially in certain parts of West Virginia, to farming? And are there ways to work around that with some sort of a tiered farming, that sort of thing? Well, a lot of things that we're doing is, uh, and that's a great question, um, We've been promoting the uh, the operation of uh, what we call high tunnels. They're not really a greenhouse. They're the big plastic hoop houses that you've seen up all over. And we're doing a lot of training uh, for uh, farmers and farmers out there. What this does is it extends the growing season uh, for instead of just your plain old backyard garden and you had so many months to grow, you can actually increase the growing for 10 months. So on a smaller plot of land, you can grow more food. And those, and it's still just as healthy, just the same, because it's right in the soil. Uh, you're using all the same practices, but you're just keeping that soil warmer. And the other good thing about those is those are being put up a uh, lot through USDA programs at the Natural Resource Conservation Service, but it is actually a conservation practice because it keeps open soil under heavy rain from being washed away. So it's actually a conservation program at the same time. So we're able to, by doing these trainings and using more of these, we can increase production on less ground and we can preserve our soil and we can use less water as well. John, did you have a quick uh, comment? Just a quick, is there a lot of training for farmers on stuff like this? Do you guys offer training programs? Because this stuff, yeah, I mean, all they, the all the new technology. Yes, there is. Now, extension services, and I've got to say, they're great. We've been great partners with uh, West Virginia uh, University Extension and West Virginia State University Extension. Uh, we've been partnering with the Natural Resource Conservation Services, uh, bringing everybody together to, to you know, all pull on the same rope to to get agriculture moving in the state of West Virginia. And then we're also, and the department is doing some training as well. So I just like to say that you know we are out there doing that training as we have the funding to do so uh, it's all very important Kent how can people find out more about your campaign for re-election well they can go to Kent for WV.com or Commissioner Kent Leonhardt on Facebook and they can find me at Kent for WV on Twitter uh, I'm very open and, uh, and available and I would like to add that I'm also considered a, kind of a national leader in agriculture. You know, when uh, the USMCA trade agreement was being negotiated, I wrote an op-ed on how important that was. President, Trump, President Trump's team saw that, uh, retweeted it, then called up and asked permission to use it to help it get passed through Congress. It passed Congress, and then President, the White House and the President invited me to the White House lawn for the signing of that USMC, you know, U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade agreement. I've also been uh, honored to be the president of the Southern Association of State Departments of Agriculture. And I was elected that by big ag states, Texas, Alabama, Louisiana, Florida. I was unanimously elected by all my peers uh, to fill that role. And the current secretary of the National Association from Oklahoma asked me to chair her rural development committee. Uh, so I'm very proud to do that. So uh, we're making a we're making a little bit of a scene on the national level, and we're making agriculture grow in West Virginia. So I'm very proud of our record. I hope everybody will give me a a third term. And you're also a Marine Corps veteran. Yes, I'm a retired lieutenant colonel from the United States Marine Corps. Very proud of my service. And my wife and I, when I retired from the Marine Corps, took an abandoned West Virginia farm it was abandoned in 57 and 96 we started restoring it and uh, we grew it from 205 acres to 380 acres uh, to and five additional leases uh, so uh, it was a great been a great experience and we're taking all that experience to uh, the department of agriculture and and let me just touch on foreign animal disease We've revamped all the foreign animal disease programs at the state in the state to make sure that it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. 
we've been able to keep the diseases out, but if it hits, we're ready to keep it contained. I feel a lot better about it now than when I first took office. Very good. Kent, thanks so much for your service to our country and your service to West Virginia. Thank you so much for having me on, and uh, look forward to chatting with you all again. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Kent Leonhardt, 906.